Well, yesterday we got to visit Ngamba Island with a couple of safari planners. We sailed across the equator towards an island surrounded by the peaceful waters of Lake Victoria. And here resides 49 orphaned chimpanzees. Fast forward to the important stuff. Jonathan, number <laughs> Here we got welcomed by our guide, Innocent, who took us through the basics of the island and chimpanzees. Most chimpanzees get here when they are not in a good health condition, but uh, we do the quarantining. After quarantining, we bring them to the island and integrate them. We'll be talking more about integration when we get to where chimpanzees are. But they get here when they are not in a very good health condition. To work with the communities and uh, we promote, for example, handicraft that uh, the women are making. And then uh, we do promote health in the communities. For instance, there is a hospital, a safe water project and others. Then we also work with schools in the island. By the time the sanctuary started, there were no schools in the island. Children were born, boys grew up to become fishermen and ladies grew up to become wives. <laughs> we'll be talking more and more as we began with the 19 chimpanzees. Those 19 chimpanzees were from Entebbe Zoo and others from uh, uh, Isinga Island, which is in the Queen Elizabeth National Park. On 1998 October, the sanctuary officially opened. But it was not open to ecotourism until 1999. Over time, the number of chimpanzees have increased. And uh, when I talk of chimpanzees here, I mean orphan chimpanzees. All the chimps are orphan, except three, which we will see later. Those were born here by accident. That one is a classic cuckoo. This sanctuary has over 130 species of birds that you can see in a single day. So if you get a guest who is really into birding, then intensive birding, you can go up to 130 species of birds. Chimpanzees are easily located, whether in the national park, whether you're here at Ngamba Island, you can easily tell where they are by looking at where the fig trees are, because that is food. So if a chimpanzee goes missing here at Ngamba Island, we only got specific points where we know they are big fig trees and the chances of finding those individuals are high. Uh, here at Ingamba we have a program where you have we, we call up people to become guardians to each of the 49 we have. You can choose either to be Sarah's guardian, Nani's guardian, Medina's guardian or just become a friend of the sanctuary in general. The money that we raise from there is to maintain the facilities on the island, to feed the chimpanzees, and also through the bookings that you give us, we also get that income to help us ensure that the place is maintained. <laughs> <laughs> Being a, a guardian goes as low as $50. When you're friends of the sanctuary, we display you there. When you are a guardian here at Ingamba Island, your name is displayed. So when I asked about having one of the chimpanzees named after me, here's what Martha said. The procedure of naming a chimpanzee is um, 
if we have an individual that has no name that's the first possibility so if that individual has no name we normally send out like a newsletter asking people to come up and the procedure is at least you have to be in position to at least take care of that chimpanzee for some time five years or to because chimpanzees in captivity live up to 60 years for example Rupareria was uh, adopted by the Rupareria Foundation of Sudir and they are taking care of him until he's 60 so that's their commitment then uh, we have one called Izzy Izzy also was adopted by uh, a gentleman from California he just came here and uh, the way the behavior of the chimpanzee it sucks its thumb the way it touches itself reminded him of uh, his child and uh, the way it was doing behaving was like this affair i'm not caring so he said easy can i name that chimpanzee it had no name return to Kampala but oh what a bumpy ride it was but we left having learned a whole lot about chimpanzees with their fascinating characters. Mm-hmm.